like a loner lately Been a minute since I woke up feeling sober When I wake I'm seeing nightmares Sleeping you are right there like you never left And I am hoping that you might care Change on me, what about us? What about the times when I feel like I could trust? Yeah, now I'm on a chase for the same shit I hear the sirens in the lake and wanna chase them Beauty on the out, but I'm surrounded by the fake shit Beasts in a maze Sing about freedom like a bird in a cage That's a whole different pain Calling up my homies and it's hard to explain Yeah, it's hard to explain Staying on my mind on the usual Wanna call you up like we used to do Tell you all the things I could do for you Nah, 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 to me Nah, 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 right now Staying on my mind on the usual Wanna call you up like we used to do Tell you all the things I could do for you Nah, 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 to me Nah, 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 right now I wonder if you're social lately I wonder if you're always fucking sober or emotional roller coaster, barely coast and hardly cope. I wanna call me, but you never push that motherfucking button. Change on me. What about us? What about the times when you feel like you can trust? Yeah, now you wanna chase for the same shit. You hear the sirens in the lake and wanna chase them. Beauty on the out, but you're surrounded by the fake shit. Beasts in a maze. Sing about freedom like a bird in a cage. That's all. What's going on, everybody? Peace, peace, everybody. This is Prime Sports Media. This is a late night show. This is time sensitive because of all the things that are happening at CU with the uh, transport portal, the transfer portal. Uh, as we already know, we uh, uh, lost another uh, player. Uh, we've got Alton uh, McCaskill, and I'm going to get into him, but we do know that we also lost another um player that I believe that had great potential, and that is Kamani McLean. Uh, he has made a decision to uh, leave the program, unfortunately, uh, but the program will go on with him or without him. I hope that he would not make this decision. I did a video earlier about him uh, just the other day ago, and a lot of you definitely uh, took part in watching that video. Um, there is a theme that's running here. His mother had put out a tweet uh, where she said, got to be somewhere where you're appreciated and not just tolerated. God takes the lead. We're right behind you. Now, remember, as I said earlier in the other video, there was reports that Kamani McLean was not taking the idea of being a college football player very seriously. He wasn't showing up to meetings on time. He wasn't studying properly, understanding the scheme. And, um, and, and, and in a sense, he did not get as much playing time. Now we come over to my man, Alton. <laughs> McCaskill. Peggy watching, Peggy Rosser, thank you for watching. This is going to be a short podcast tonight. So uh, remember, um, Alton is a young man who came over uh, from uh, Houston, where he was an outstanding freshman. Uh, on this past Wednesday, Alton McCaskill decided that um, he wanted to leave. He This was all put out by on Instagram by Harlan Sports Group, posted on Instagram that he intended to enter the transfer portal. This was confirmed by ESPN. And Alton was an outstanding high school player. Um, Alton played high school football at Oak Ridge High School in Texas where he was an four-star prospect. He was the number 386 overall recruit in 2021 cycle, according to the On Sports Industry ranking average. Now, he put up some uh, great numbers when he played in uh, in Houston. I got And this is why Coach Prime heavily uh, attempted to recruit him um, at that time in terms of him coming through the transfer portal. And let me do this real quick. We're, we are live. I appreciate everybody coming over. Um, let me just say this. This is what he did as a freshman when he played in the American Atlantic Conference, everybody. When he was in the American Atlantic Conference, and I'm going to put this up here for you to see uh, what he did in that lead. As a true freshman, he put in 21. He was in, in 2021, 
Alton was the American Atlantic Conference Rookie of the Year, rushing for 961 yards, 16 touchdowns at Houston. He then suffered a torn ACL in spring of 2022, missing the entire season. And we know last year he did not really play much for uh, CU. Here he is in a game against Oregon. Let me put this back up here again like this against Oregon. Here he is against the game that they played against UCLA. Uh, remember, he decided that he wanted to be redshirted. Uh, Coach Prime was cool with giving him a redshirt year. And uh, according to all accounts, he was working hard to get himself ready for the season. He was battling with, um, I want to put this up here right here. He was battling pretty hard. There, there he is right there with Dylan Edwards, who's outstanding as well. <laughs> Dylan Edwards is who you see in that left corner. And um, he's been working hard. And let me show you a, a little bit of a video of him preparing himself prior to this. Get over there. Get over there. Get over there. See him right there. Get on over there. Moving. Grab a wrist. There he is working hard from his injuries there you go. and we up. thought we were going to get this orange there he is working hard finish up finish Not up bad. we there were looking go. forward to this finish at cu up. push push finish. working hard not bad look at him there you go. look at the finish skill up. set not okay there he is catching the ball out of the backfield and that's something that he was noted that was something that Alton was heavily known for. McCaskill was known for his ability not only to run in between the tackles, outside the tackles when he was at Houston, but being able to catch the ball out of the backfield in the flats. And that's what I was looking forward to him matching up with Shador and how that would actually be powerful for them going into this year because one of the things that was heavily missing in the team that Shador Sanders needed dearly was a running game to control the defense, to keep the defense off. But they could never generate enough run uh, just a year ago. And so from all accounts, uh, Alton was feeling good, working hard. Um, but then he was being pushed uh, heavily by – Dylan Edwards, okay? And now you've got uh, Savion Wilkinson, who's also uh, on the team, still on the team after they, they lost him. I just want to um, emphasize this again. This man is out here hips, working hips, hard. Hips, yep, hips. And I'm just um, I'm disappointed that he has entered the transfer portal that he's going to leave. Uh, he's one of 14 players from CU so far that have entered the transfer portal since 15-day window has opened up for the transfer portal, which opened up on Tuesday. However, as you lose players, as you know, you gain players. So as Coach Prime has lost a few players that he originally brought in in the 2023 recruitment year, particularly from the transfer portal, there's an opportunity – for Coach Prime and, and CU to receive great players that may decide that they want to come to CU. And he's saying that it's already a potential thing that's going to happen. And this is just where college football is today. They've given these young men the ability to act like uh, free agents now where they can leave a school and, go and transfer somewhere else. And a lot of times this is for all kinds of reasons. Sometimes guys feel like they're not appreciated. Sometimes guys feel like, hey, I'm not going to be the starter um, I should be the starter. You know, sports is a team game, but it also is ego-driven. And sometimes guys don't want to take a back seat to someone. Sometimes guys feel like, hey, I should, I should be the starter. They don't like the playing time that they're getting. They don't like the attention that they're getting, a lack of there compared to someone else. And that can make these guys decide they're going to leave. We're dealing with guys that are 18, 19, 20 years old, very young, um, and what have you. But like I said, I didn't want to see the, the, the young man leave. I was looking forward. He reported this. Let me put this on here right here. Let me take, um, let me take, um, I'm going to put uh, Alton back on there right there to the side. Now, originally this broke out 
that Alton McCaskill was told uh, ESPN that he's entering the NCAA transfer portal. Uh, Alton earned an AAC Rookie of the Year honors in 2021, as I had spoke before, while he was playing football at Houston, rushing for 961 yards, grabbing 113 receiving yards. He'll have two more years of eligibility. Unfortunately, it will not be with CU. I'm not happy about that at all. I think that um, him and Shador would have been a great combination, but the issue is, is that um, he feels that he should be a running back one. And then there's there's rumor out there. I'm going to talk about his father because his father has said some things on Twitter or what we call X that got deleted. But I've got um, the documented proof that these are things that the father said and his disappointment with the way things went at CU. Look, I'm saying, once again, these guys are young. Uh, they're impressionable. They all, and let's be honest, a lot of these young guys, in their minds, they feel like, I got to get to the NFL. You got to make that money. And if I'm not getting playing time, I'm not getting reps, the NFL scouts are not going to see me. They're not going to see me playing, and I can't feature my talent. And so this is all about trying to get to the almighty NFL, if you know what I mean. All these guys want to be what we call NFL Bind, right? Bound. Tell the truth. Okay, that's what it all boils down to. The all money, the almighty dollar to getting to the NFL and what that rep represents. I want to thank those that are watching. Uh, we get most of our views after the fact of the video, but I appreciate you all that are coming over and listening. Um, you know, we know that Travis Hunter has been getting a lot of shine because he's a in hell of a hell of a player. We know that. Uh, Shador Sanders being the quarterback is going to get a lot of attention too. And I just think that these, these young men are, they're young, they're impressionable. They want attention. We live in a society today where everybody wants to be the one, the number one people. There are some entitlement issues that sometimes young people can have. Uh, there can be a variety of things that can cause a young man to uh, want to leave. But here's what he said on social media. Let's read his own words. The only let me, I'm going to read this part. This is the first one I wanted to put up. My time. This is Alton uh, McCaskill who, who said this. My time at the University of Colorado was great. It filled with plentiful opportunities. Also with the most talented players and the most insightful coach. Talking about Coach Prime. Uh, when he says the most uh, insightful uh, coach, he's talking about uh, prime here, y'all. That's what he's saying. Okay. Also with the most talented players and the most insightful coach, as I said before, thank you so much to coach prime and coach flea for giving me this opportunity uh, and to the fans for their support. Okay. <laughs> That's what he said. He also said this, the only person that has any impact, input or any influence with my decision is me. My apologies to some opinions were voiced that may leave people hmm, sort of off put. Right. Uh, please do not let that be a reflection of my character and integrity of my career. Now, his father, and I don't know if he's talking about his father because his father came out and said some choice words about why he feels his son um, is leaving. See, that's his father right there. And I'm going to read exactly what his father had to say on Twitter or what we call X now that his father was very candid as to why he feels his son is leaving. It's very similar to what, um, uh, very similar, and I'm going to take this off, to what uh, Kamani McLean's mother talked about, about feeling appreciated. And this is a different world we live in. These young, young people want the clout. They want the attention uh, to be squarely on them. But um, I think it was outstanding that he made this statement because he's basically saying in a sort of a cryptic way that he knows that people have said some things, maybe in his own family, but he's saying that, hey, I'm making this decision for myself, right? Also, I want to put this up by Coach 
this is something that Coach Prime um, had to say, and I want to put this up here very importantly, and I appreciate those of you that are coming in. This is what uh, Coach Prime had to say about the young man. Coach Prime is a standout, is a stand-up coach, y'all. Uh, coach Prime or Coach Sanders said he hopes that that this this is not that's not the statement that I wanted. This is the one that I wanted. This what is the one that I want? I know when um, Kamani McClain left, he said that he he ended up in a good situation. He 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 basically said he wants these young men that leave the program to be successful wherever they go. Right? He knows that hey, you're gonna lose some players, you're gonna gain some players. Uh, that's just the way it goes in the world of big time uh, college uh, football. Okay. Now let's. I'm gonna do this. Let's get to the father. So this came out in an article, the father of top college football transfer calls out uh, Coach Prime Deion Sanders and Colorado staff for favoritism. Now, what do we mean by favoritism? We know that Coach Prime uh, has a lot invested, a lot of, uh, as a father and a coach, into his son, um, Shador Sanders, right? Because Shador Sanders (laughs) is a bona fide NFL quarterback that will be drafted pretty high in the 2025 draft just uh, the next year. And then, then, of course, there's Travis Hunter, who is definitely going to be a high pick. He's a dual threat. He can play defensive back, wide receiver, the whole nine yard, right? And so maybe, I don't want to say there's jealousy, but maybe, maybe that's where the father feels that, hey, because those players are getting the NIL money. Those players are getting the attention. But those players are getting attention because they're very good players, right? And just like any parent, you want the best for your child, your son, your daughter. And you you think the world of them and you don't want them to play second fiddle to anybody. And that's why that's where emotions and ego and all sort of things can get dragged into these situations, unfortunately. Uh, but the father had some words to say on the Twitter streets. And let me put this up here just for you right here. This is his father, his tweet. He says, my son is not running back one. We got to go. So he's basically saying, if his son is not running back one, then we got to get out of here. And remember, I told you right there in the left corner, as you look down, that's Dylan Edwards, young man. They say he's playing like a monster in practice. He's looking good that he's been pushing Alton for that starting position. And it looks like uh, Dylan Edwards looks like he may be the opening day starter for CU. We'll have to see. But it looks that way right now. And so the father's basically saying, if my son isn't a running back one, then we got to go. He says he was ready last year. Uh Uh-oh. He's saying his son was ready last year. Um... And that was the year that Alton uh, did not get as much playing time because we were under the impression that we were told that he still recovered. Here's here's him in a game against Oregon. They got beat pretty bad in that particular game. Here's a game where he came in and played a little bit against UCLA. So the father feels like he could have played the full season and gotten more playing time last year. And And I believe that. That's what was missing in the element of their team. Again, I'm going to say it, that there wasn't enough effective running, and I often was wondering why Alton wasn't out there enough. But Coach Primate told us that the young man was still recovering from his ACL tour that he suffered back in, what was it, 2021 as a true freshman. In 2021, McCaskill was the was the uh, um, the American Atlantic Conference Rookie of the Year? I talked about that, and um, but he suffered an injury, an ACL injury that that gave him a setback. And at some point in time, he he uh, he talked to Coach Prime about getting a red shirt year so that he could be ready for this year. But the father, who I'm going to put up here, who didn't seem very happy about the whole situation says that his son, in this tweet that he put out, and this is a tweet that was deleted, that was later deleted, uh, either by the father or I don't, I don't know. But it says he was ready last year. 
He's 100% this year. Okay, he's 100% this year. Unfortunately, have to find another home where there's no favoritism. And he is a valued, appreciated, there go that word appreciated. Uh, Kamani McClain's mother was saying the same stuff. We got to go somewhere where we're appreciated, appreciated, and has no doubt about running back one. So basically, this is the thing. This is the problem, though. This is the problem that I think the father is going to have to realize in this situation. Your son hasn't played football in a number of, he hasn't played significant games, significant snaps, and has not made significant plays in the last couple of years. And you got to ask yourself, a young man who's coming off of an ACL tear, how many big-time college programs are going to snatch him up and make him automatically running back one? I'm talking about like a really good – I'm not talking about a small program, a program that's – I'm talking about if he wants to go to a big-time program, how many of them are going to take a chance on a, guy, on a young man who has not – who has a – who had a serious ACL tear – and has not played significant amount of football. And Coach Prime has said this, when you go into that transfer portal, you're sort of taking your chances on things happening for you in the right way. So I hope that things will work out for, for his family, for him. But um, the thing that puzzles me is that Coach Prime was willing to give him another year of eligibility by redshirting him. So he wasn't like he was only going. So he was going to have more time to play and develop and show what he could do. I think I don't know if it's because these young players today don't like competition because obviously uh, Dylan Edwards was pushing the competition. Something's going on. Um, the father again. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Uh, he has the right to say what he has to say because it is his son. Doesn't mean we have to agree, but he has a right to say and express how he feels. We want to go. We want to be valued. We want to be appreciated and has no and have no doubt about being running back one. He is the best running back that Colorado in, in Colorado, but he's not setting. We going. Now, we know that that was a theme last year. We coming. He says we going. Thank you, Colorado, for your hospitality. McCaskill Strong, these are the hashtags. We going, RB1, proven, and that's the father's um, tag right there at the bottom. So if you tell him, if you think this is not true, what happened, here is a copy of the deleted tweet. Here's how it looked. on the. There is the actual proof of what I'm saying. That's the actual snapshot of the father's this is his father. His father is a third of the father's Twitter or X page. This is a snapshot. He later, either he did this, I guess he did this. He later deleted this. So what I showed you earlier was an excerpt, excerpt of an example of what he said in that tweet. Let me put this back up here again for those of you to see, to see what's going on there. That's the actual tweet from the father. So this is another similar situation uh, like the Kamani McLean situation where the mother says like this. Th to me, uh, these are parents who probably have, and they have the right to have this. They have high expectation for their kids. They want to see their kids win. But let's be honest, this is about just like that movie Hoop Dreams, right? This is about the dream of their kids going to the NFL and making that NFL money. The mother, again, for Kamani McClain said, we got to go somewhere where we are appreciated. That's what she said for her son. And then the father for Alton is sort of saying the same thing in his tweet that got deleted. Unfortunately, we have to find another home where there's no favoritism and he is valued, appreciated. So, it comes off kind of it comes off kind of self-centered because football is a team game. It's about the team, not just one individual. But it comes off that mm, if Alton was going to be guaranteed to be running back one, the number one running back on the team, what 
to make the way the father is speaking, it looks like they wouldn't be leaving, that he wouldn't be entering the transfer portal. And the truth of the matter is, the way sports is, team sports is, I mean, when I grow up, when I grew up, I, I'm, a, I'm a generation Xer. When I grew up, there was no participation trophies. You earned everything. The way I grew up, when you play sports, you have to earn the starting position in practice by what you do. You have to un outplay your competition and also outplay them physically but mentally. Remember, Kamani McLean, they said, was having issues with his study habits, with his practice habits, with his ability to make it to meetings on time. I'm not saying that uh, Alton had these problems because I haven't heard anything uh, bad about him in that manner. As you see him here hustling, get over there, get over there, get over there, get over there, working finish hard. up. As you can see right Grab there. Wrist. There you go, finish up. Okay. There you go. There you go. Drop the hips. Right, drop the hips. He's working hard. But then the question is, as you see Dylan Edwards right next to me in that in that left corner side, is Dylan Edwards working? Did Dylan Edwards do enough to work harder than Alton? And then the question is, remember, usually when guys have an ACL tear, that's serious. Usually it takes you at least two years, even if you come back to play, to finally play on the field, you're never really the same player until you come back that second year. And the problem is that Alton hasn't, didn't get enough snaps last year. The father says he was strong enough last year, and he's definitely strong this year, as you see him right here again. Here you go, finish up. Orange. Finish up. So it's unfortunate that um, – Things didn't work out for him to stay. He's He wants to enter. Look at the, I want you to do me a favor, everybody. If you like this video so far, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and notification because I definitely would appreciate that. I appreciate you watching the video tonight, this morning, this day, wherever you are in the world. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can always keep up with uh, whatever content I put out on this channel. I really appreciate you. Everybody out there in the chat room listening, everybody listening in the clouds. So definitely do me the favor by doing that. Um, you know, I've gone a little dormant on this channel, but I've uploaded a couple of videos the last few days. Um, I think the other video that I put out about what uh, Cam Newton said about where he thinks um, Shallow Shador Sanders um, is going to be drafted. I think I might have lunched that video, that story, a little bit too late. I think uh, it's been out for a while, but I lunched a couple of videos, and I'm doing this live, um, and I appreciate you coming over. Uh, one of the things, I'm going to say this again. One of the things that I liked about Alton McCasco, one of the things I like about him is that he could catch the ball out of the backfield. And I would have just liked to have seen him coming into this season. I would have liked to have seen what that would have looked like with him, with his ability to come out of that backfield and as a safety valve for Shador on those passing downs where you can line him up, sort of like what the 49ers do with McCaffrey. I would have liked to have seen that element because that's the element that I think that they need to use Dylan Edwards for Dylan Edwards last year is a running back. That's best used when he's running to the outside, you get him open in the flats, you get the ball in a hand in his hand, passing him the ball. Whereas this man that you see right here, there you go. he up. has the ability to run Push. inside the tackles, Not outside bad. the tackles, and he also has the ability. Finish up. Not right here, he has the ability to catch the ball like you see right there, out in the flats like you see right there. And so the element that he would have brought to the team is the that I think Dylan Edwards didn't bring to the team last year is that he had that he has uh, he, he might be a stronger he's out of all the backs that they had he might be the stronger 
more physical back in terms of inside running and then the ability to still be finesse on the outside. Aldo Savion, who came over from Jackson State in a transfer portal originally, who played for Coach Prime at Jackson State, he's a he is more of a power type back as well, and he will be playing with them um, another for this year. So we just have to see how this all pans itself out. Let me let you see a video from Coach Prime uh, after he has had to adjust and deal with the fact that he has, you know, lost some players in the transfer portal. So let's hear what Coach Prime has to say. But we can attract those type of players, but I don't think we're losing those type of players. And, and if we do, we're good. We're good. Quit making a big deal out of nothing. Well, okay. As always, Dion exudes confidence. I'm going to play it again because Dion is saying he's not worrying because he knows he has more players coming in from the transfer portal. Let's hear this again. But we can attract those type of players, but I don't think we're losing those type of players. This is fair use, fair and, use. And if we do, we're good. We're good. Quit making a big deal out of nothing. Well, okay. So, <laughs> Coach Prime can say that because as you lose players, you get new players that come in. Maybe you may even get someone that's even better. So, because that's the way it works in college football right now. The underclass transfer portal opened up just this past Tuesday. So, we're going to be seeing uh, opportunities for CU to plug in those gaps on the team where they lost players. And they, this also gives them an opportunity to maybe get players, like I said, who um, have maybe more experience, uh, players that could be even better than those that they had on the team that decided to jump into the transfer portal to transfer to another school, to another place where they feel that they will flourish. So I think Coach Prime um, is showing confidence, and he's saying, what's all the worrying about? Um, because things are still going to happen. <laughs> I want to thank everybody in the chat room that's here. We got Superfly Reaction. Um, we got some great folks in there who have come in that have been supporting the channel uh, tonight. I, I would have loved to have done this video in the early part of the day, because of course more people would be over here because I know it's kind of late across the country. I'm in the West coast, but um, I appreciate you all for coming over. Those that have came over tonight to watch and hear the podcast that I'm putting out tonight about the situation with uh, Alton uh, leaving the program. Um, you know, I'm not happy about it, but these things do happen. Um, let me read this. This is another thing about him. Um, let me read this right here. Last season, last offseason, unfortunately, not much came of his time at Colorado as he played in just four games, carrying the ball 14 times for 59 yards. Alton McCaskill would eventually redshirt season to help maintain his eligibility going forward. And as a thing stands now, he remains eligible will not be used with the Buffaloes in 2024 and beyond. Okay? That's the disappointing part because he got a red shirt from Coach Prime. Um, I don't want to make an inference that he used Coach – He, but, you know, it just seems interesting that he got that red shirt and then he now leaves when he had a whole extra year under his belt – to kind of work out and build himself up for this upcoming 2024 season in the Big 12 because they're going to be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, let me put this up here, they're going to be in the um, in the Big 12 this year. Okay? They're playing in the Big 12. And um, I, I just don't like, I, 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 I don't know. Um, I think Coach Prime says don't worry, but – I really think his skill set fits well with what Shador would need that would take pressure. Because remember, Shador was the most sacked quarterback last year. 
because the offensive line just wasn't up to par. And now, hopefully, with the additions that they've added to the team, um, that they'll be uh, more fortified this year. Uh, after losing uh, Alton, um, Colorado, they have about, what, three scholarship running backs on board. Like I said, Savion Wilkinson, uh, sophomore uh, uh, Dylan Edwards. And remember, there's a freshman, uh, Micah Welsh. I'm looking forward to him. I'm looking forward to Mike, Micah. There's a junior walk on Charlie. So I'm looking forward to um, what those guys are going to bring to the table as well. So, and I hope you are too. I, I think everybody in the chat room, we got uh, Janet Fox. And we got, uh, oh, we got, um, how you doing? How you doing, my good sister? I see you in there. She says, Charlie, his play is great. Charlie's play is great. Yeah, yeah. He's the, Charlie is the, uh, he's the walk-on. He's the walk-on. He's the junior walk-on. And remember, Welch is a highly that young man was a highly touted running back who I did a video on him. He runs with a lot of power. So this is my thing. In order for CU to be effective this year and to take that pressure off Shador to a certain degree, they're going to have to really commit to the running game this year like no other. That really was going to help them because right now they have one of the deepest receiving groups in the country. I think their receive. I think their receiving unit on this team is way better than last year. So that's a scary thing that they've actually improved in their receiving core. But you got to give Shador time by letting him be upright to get the ball to them. And I think with the guys that they brought in on that offensive line, I think Shador Sanders is going to have a hell of a year. I think Travis Hunter is going to do what he, Travis Hunter does, y'all. Okay. <laughs> That's just the facts. And um, let me see if I missed anything here. I don't want to. I don't want to miss anything. I think I've said enough about the subject matter. And with that said, everybody, I appreciate you being up listening. Have a good night. Have a good day. A good morning, wherever you are watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Share the video on all your social media, your Twitter, your TikTok, okay, or or your. Uh, what was it? Your your Instagram, however you can share it. Your your Facebook makes more sense. The uh, the X makes sense. Wherever you can share this, if you're a content creator, put it in your community tab. I appreciate you. I thank all the mods in the chat room. I thank everybody that's here. I know it's late for some folks, but uh, hey, next time I go live, my goal is to go live on the weekend, and I'm bringing you more additional content. Uh, to the to these YouTube streets, along with everybody else that's breaking it down, and uh, I think Big Dog Chico sent me a um, a Instagram message, and I hadn't been using my inst my my Instagram for my prime sport. I haven't been on there in a while, where he was inviting me to do some sort of collaboration with him for a weekly show. So I'm definitely down with that. I send him a message back. Hopefully, I'll hear from him very soon. Um, so we'll we'll keep this we'll keep this thing going. I'm going to be cranking out and putting out the content, whether it be uploaded or live streams like this. I appreciate you all. Everybody, have a great rest of your evening. Have a great day tomorrow, and tell somebody that you love them. Take care. Peace. Peace. Peace.
Staying on my mind on the usual Wanna call you up like we used to do Tell you all the things I could do for you Nah, 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 tell me nah, nah, nah right now I've been feeling like a loner lately Been a minute since I woke up feeling sober When I wake I'm seeing nightmares Sleeping you are right there like you never left And I am hoping that you might get change on me What about us? Tell the truth.